How's it going, Jay Siemens here. Welcome to my channel. While I do like to bring you guys on a lot of my ice fishing adventures, I do like to help teach and educate as well. We all learn somewhere. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a pop-up style shack. This is the most common style shack. And while it is pretty basic, pretty straightforward, there's some tips and tricks I've learned over the years that make the whole experience just a little bit better. And I'm gonna share those with you right now. So first thing, gotta grab the shack. All right. Today we're setting up the 60th anniversary shack from Eskimo. It is plaid, which is kind of their color. Uh, it's a unique looking shack, but it's a three to four man shack. I think this weighs, I wanna say like 45 pounds. But these shacks, there's one thing that makes it not a flaw, but one thing you have to be aware of is these shacks can act like kites. If you're by yourself trying to set this up, you're not paying attention. On a windy day, it's super difficult. And that's where you can get yourself into trouble. So today, we're not dealing with that much wind, but I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up as if it's a super windy day. So the first thing you're probably gonna wanna do is face your back into the wind. You know, be holding on to it so it's gonna blow that way. If you're faced into the wind trying to set up the shack and it blows itself into you, it's, probably, it's gonna knock you over, it's gonna blow away, it's gonna be difficult, so. In the bottom, there is a little license holder. I know in some states, I think you need to put your license on the back. And then you've got your pegs and your straps. All right, so these pegs are what's gonna keep your shack secure. It's gonna keep it locked down in big wind. And this is a pretty cool attachment that Esco makes. Basically, it's a little claw that fits over the peg. Traditionally, you just hand crank this in, and it can be pretty tough. I kind of hate trying to hand crank them. So you buy this little adapter, it's cheap. I'll, I'll link all the stuff below. And this is the beauty of it, is it locks in to your cordless drill. And if you're using a pistol bit already and you have a drill long anyways, it's not a big deal. And right now, that is gonna drill it into the ice and gonna be way faster for not only putting them in, but with reverse pulling them out. And you can get an adapter for your electric auger as well. But uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the corner that's pointed into the wind pegged down for any, before we go any further. And, and obviously we don't need to do this today because it's not windy. But the problem is, is that initial pop up when you're, when you're by yourself is that's where the wind can take it away. So if you peg down that one corner, even if things go horribly wrong, your shack is secured and that peg's gonna hold it in place. It might flap a bit, but it's not gonna go halfway across the lake because there are some funny videos of that. So anyways, the shack comes with this Velcro strap on it right here. And that kind of keeps everything bundled together. And I will tell you, you will lose this strap. I guarantee it. I mean, I'm really good at losing stuff. I lose these all the time. So later on, I'm gonna show you my, my plan B that I always bring along. It's a ratchet strap, but it'll it'll help you. Anyways, we're gonna get this started. It is cold today, guys. It's like minus 25 Celsius before wind chill. Crispy day. A big thing to keep in mind when you're buying a shack is the thermal materials. These Eskimos have this thermal thick material. It holds heat way better. So even without firing up the heater, it holds heat very well and you don't have to burn as much propane when you are running your heater. So anyways, these little plastic things on the tip you should take off. And I know it seems obvious, but there are people that I've seen fishing with the hook covers on their hook when they buy a brand new lure and we've all been there, it's okay. So I'm gonna be completely honest, this step of pegging down before I even set up is something I've never done before because typically I'm with someone else if I'm fishing in big winds and trying to set it up. But if you're by yourself, this is gonna be the way to do it. So as you can see, putting it in, Make sure you're not in reverse. And she's tight. That is going nowhere. Okay, so it's locked in right now. Now we're gonna start popping them out. And the biggest thing to remember when you're popping these poles out is not to force it. That's how you're gonna break stuff. These poles are super resilient. Yeah, you're gonna have to try pretty hard to break these, but if you're ever having to force it, you're probably doing something wrong. It's sometimes a little tougher by yourself because you don't have that resistance working against on the other side. Normally you'll need someone holding one side of the shack and then you can pull it, but we'll make it work by myself. These shacks are just so easy to pop up. It's ridiculous. So you're just gonna pull, boom. All right, so last thing we need to do is pop up the top now and that's like three quarters of it. All right, so I mean, we've got it basically popped up and if it was a calm day, I probably wouldn't peg it down anymore, but we're gonna pretend that's windy. I'll show you a couple of different pegs. So now we've got the four corners pegged down and this is something you only really need to do in extreme wind or if you're camping all night and there's a chance of the wind shifting and this is locking in the sides. So watch this right now, if you're dealing with extreme winds, a big gust of wind hits it right here, 
it'll pop the side of the shack in. And I have seen gear absolutely yard sailed and it is terrifying when that happens. You need pretty big winds, but it does happen. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna anchor it down. So these are the straps that come with your shack. We're gonna clip the carabiner end to that little attachment on the side. I'll show you a close up of it. And then we're gonna drill this into the ice a couple feet away to create that anchor point. So I'll, I'll show you some close ups. All right, so we're putting another peg in here. I don't know, three feet away. This just grips so well. That peg is not going anywhere. We're hooking it on here. As you can see, there's lots of slack right now still. We're gonna slide it onto the hook. We're just gonna press that little button on the side. And you like, even putting a little bit of tension on it can be good. So now we've got it tight and that's gonna stop from pushing in. Look, I can't even push it in if I want. That's a lot of weight I'm putting on it. So that is your fail safe. That is for big winds. That is not going anywhere. If I'm camping on the ice, I'm pegging it down everywhere. I do not want to wake up to a shack flailing away or a side pushing in. So now you want to cover the flaps. You want to make sure these are pulled out all the way around the edge. There's kind of two options. You're going to shovel, or you're going to kick snow over the edge and that's going to keep all that heat inside. Your propane's going to go so much further. But on the other side of it, sometimes there's no snow. So what you need to do in a situation like that is you need to take your auger and you need to drill some slush on the edge. You don't want to soak it, but you want to drill a little bit so you get those ice shavings and then you can cover up that slack. You're going to want to keep a, a spot in there to pass your hose underneath if you're using a 20 pound propane tank, then you can keep your propane tank outside and the heater on the inside just saves a little more space. So I'm going to show you guys both methods now. It's, it's pretty basic, but uh, I'll just show you how I do it. All right, so let's pretend that there's no snow in the lake right now. You're on glare ice and you want to pack it around because it's still cold. So what I would do is go around the edge, drill down a couple inches, and I'll do this all the way around the shack. All right, so we've created some ice, some slush there, and then you're just going to throw it on the edge and cover it all the way around. Obviously, you don't want to drill all the way around when you're on thinner ice because you'd actually like <laughs> bust yourself through. But so that's option number one if you're dealing with glare ice and if you have lots of snow like today, super easy. I mean, I don't really think it needed to be mentioned, but you just shovel it all the way around, leaving a spot for your propane hose. That's pretty much it for setup on the outside. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of setup, some tips and tricks for the inside, and that's pretty much it. So let's go inside. Well guys, we are in the shack. We're getting a little fogged and that's kind of uh, what I was mentioning that even with no heater right now, it's so much warmer with this thermal siding that you you don't always need a heater. It just even cuts that breeze a little bit. Couple tips and tricks, couple of things that I like to bring when I'm in the shack, and this is something I just started using recently, these foam pads. And another piece of advice I will say is you don't want to scratch the snow all the way to the bottom. If you're trying to get some super cool footage of fish under some super clear ice when it's a little bit thinner, that's awesome. Clear it right to the bottom. But if you don't leave some snow on there, it's going to become a bit of a swimming pool, a skating rink later when you start melting that off of the heater. So this is one thing I really like to use. Uh, these will be linked below. You can get these foam mats at Princess Auto. They interlock. You could cut whole spots out if you wanted. This is really nice for just keeping your feet warmer, keeping it off the snow, keeping your heater on top of, right? I could rest my heater on top of it. It's not gonna make a puddle in front of it. And then the last piece that I guess we should talk about is just seating configuration. So for myself, when I'm filming, often I'm trying to put my back as close to this as possible, as close to the tent as possible, typically towards the door in case I need to run for tip ups. That's something to keep in mind. I'm also always thinking about, you know, which window, how am I gonna be set up for, it for looking at tip-ups as well because obviously you want to keep the door closed and then yeah where's your rod going to be so if i'm sitting right here put my hole in my flash in the middle my heater is probably going to sit beside me on the right tripod's going to be in the far corner obviously with filming i'm thinking about it a little bit differently when i'm out on the ice but if you're just fishing with a couple buddies another great option is for everyone to have their chair or their bucket in the middle and then you're fishing in the corner so i'm fishing in this corner my buddy my wife is fishing behind me back to back They've got their hole in the corner, two holes for, for each rod. And that's another way to spread out. So you kind of just got to figure out what, what feels good. And then as far as drilling holes, uh, if you're drilling with a gas auger inside of the shack, definitely open all the doors, open the vents. This vent is just a good thing to keep open all the time. Uh, while some heaters have shut offs, if there's not enough oxygen, it's still just a good, a good safety practice to have to crack one of those vents. Um, as far as electric augers go, you can drill your holes inside, no problem. 
Uh, another thing you could do is you could set up the shack, mark your holes, pour a little Coke on the water or, or on the ice, mark it out with your foot and then drill the holes, move the shack back over. But either way, just play with it, figure out what you like. And there you have it. This is like one of the most affordable ways to get into ice fishing. The pop-up shack is so nice because you don't need a truck to transport it. You can throw it, you know, in the back of your car. Um, you can fish, this one's three to four people. The technology is amazing with this thermal siding, keeps you so warm. One other thing that I really like to have, especially if you're fishing into the dark, are some LED lights. Uh, I, don't, I don't even think these are made anymore. I will link some more below. Princess Auto has all sorts of options for that sort of thing. And uh, it's really good because you can hang them on these poles here. But as I mentioned, when you're popping these in and out, don't force it. While these are super durable, you can break these potentially. You know, you can get them fixed and everything, but something to just keep in mind, you should never have to force it. Okay guys, that's pretty much it for setup. As you can see, it's so easy. You know, if, if you don't have to put those straps in, if it's a calm day and it's a warm day and you don't want to pack snow over top the edges, you're set up in like under a minute. Those other things add a little more time, but you know, it's the security of your shack not blowing away and your shack getting a lot warmer. Um, add some lights, add some foam mats, and you're going to be very comfortable on the ice. I got a couple more things I want to show you, but first we need to pack up. One last thing, I like to do the reverse. So I like to do the top first and then all the sides when I'm packing up. I'm not sure how much of a difference it makes. And now I'm just going to fold it all into the middle, making sure nothing's getting forced. All right, so here's my last two pieces of advice. This is just your basic ratchet strap. I don't know about you, but for me, there's a decent chance I'm gonna lose this Velcro strap. I always keep a couple of ratchet straps with me, and that's what I'm gonna do to ratchet it all together. If you're getting it back into the bag, you need to get the shack smaller. And the other piece I'm gonna to touch on is, I don't bother putting it back into the bag a lot because when I bring it back to my shop, I want it to dry out. I don't want it to stay wet in that bag. Don't want it to get moldy. So a lot of the time when I'm fishing, I won't even use the bag. I'll just have it strapped together like this as long as it's not flapping in the wind, wind too bad. If you're not worried about it, throw a ratchet strap, throw the Velcro strap that comes along with it, ratchet it down nice and small, and then you know, if you don't need to throw in the bag, don't throw in the bag. So anyways, we're gonna ratchet down, throw in the back of the truck. So I'm gonna bear hug it to the thickest spot, the bulkiest spot, cause that's what I wanna squish smaller. Cinch it as tight as I can. Now it's nice and small. If I wanna drop it back in the bag, it'd be no problem. And that's it for this video, guys. I know, pretty basic how-to. Hopefully you found it helpful. Hopefully some tips and tricks will help you when you're out on the ice. Uh, if you have any other video ideas, please comment them below. Uh, I, like, I like teaching. So we're gonna do more of this stuff. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and we'll catch you on the ice.